Thank you so much. Hey, welcome to church. Welcome to the house of God. Uh, I want to say that if you're a, a first timer here, you're new to City Light Church, and I know we got, I know people coming in and and seeing fe- new fe- faces and all the time, and that is so good. And uh, we're so glad you're in the house of God. And uh, if you didn't get, if you're new here and you didn't get one of those those little packs called the welcome package, make sure you get one. You can pick one up at the coffee bar or. At, or at the um, Connections booth. We just want to know who you are. Just fill it up. And we're so thankful that you could be here today. I want to say that if you're looking for a, uh, a church family to belong to, a, a church, you know, we'd love you to become a part of our family. You know, and we always say the bigger the family, the better, right? So anyway, welcome, welcome to City Light Church this morning. This is, uh, uh, this is like a national Back to Church Sunday. And, um, you know, it's all about God drawing people back. You know, after the summertime, it's, we've kind of relaxed a bit and we've gotten a little bit out of the groove. But, you know, there's things that God wants to speak to us even today, right? And to get us going and moving forward in our lives because there's so much at stake in the kingdom of God. So we're so glad that you're here this morning. Welcome to City Light Church. Welcome if you're watching us online too as well. So who's ready for the word of God this morning? Yeah, are you ready? Okay. You can be loud. You can be enthusiastic. Um, I, we're, in a, we're in a great series. It's called After Having, Having Done Everything to Stand. Boy, is this a relevant series. And uh, <clears throat> I'm not talking about the, that we, we were in a, in a spiritual battle, that we're living in a culture, that there really is a spiritual enemy against God's people. His name is Satan. He really does exist. And then I talked last week about, about the, 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 the weapons of our warfare, that God did not leave us defenseless, but he gave us powerful weapons. And last week I talked about, pray, about prayer. And um, I'm going to go a little bit off that topic, maybe continue about some of the other. There are, are so many powerful weapons that he's given us as believers. And listen, if you don't know what they are, then you can't use them. And most Christians are, have no power because they don't realize the weapons that God has given them, right? So we're, we're gonna, we'll maybe carry that on uh, later on in, in, the, in a couple of weeks. So, but today I'm going to talk about standing. Standing for generations. But let's, let's pray first. Father, I thank you for the word of God today. I thank you for every person here today. I believe that you want to speak a special message to us this morning. Help us to be open to hear it, to receive it, and to begin to walk in it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I'm talking about standing strong for generations to come. And can I say this, that we as a church, we are a church for generations. You know, and, and uh, it's, it's, it's part of who we are. It's our vision. It's our heart. And uh, we believe that a church needs to be of all ages, right? So it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Let me tell you, God's not finished with you yet. God has things for you to do. He's got a job for you to do, right? No, God has a purpose for every person in this room, every person he's created, no matter, no matter who you are, God's not done for, with you. Now, the, the, this next generation that's coming after you. There's a generation of people who are coming after us, right? And I want to tell you, they need you. They need us. This generation needs the, this generation needs to be standing strong because there are generations coming after us that need you and I. <clears throat> and let me say this. The blessings that, of God that we have in our life, that we experience, listen, they're not just for us alone. They're not just to stop with you. They are, me- they are meant to be passed on to future generations, even three generations into the future. You know how vital it is to be generationally minded. Let me ask you, how far does your vision go? How far does your influence and your impact go? There was an interesting study that was done by a guy, and his name was... A.E. Winship, and he did the study in the year 1900. And he did a study of two men who lived and died in the 18th century. 
Now, here's the two men. The first guy was Max Jukes. Now, Jukes was an atheist. He married a girl of the same opinion, and from his union <coughs> with this girl, he had 1,026 descendants. Now, a study, the, a study of this man's descendants showed that 300 died prematurely, 100 were sent to penitentiary, 190 sold themselves to crime and to vice, 100 were drunkards, and the cost, the family cost the state of New York $1,100,000, which is an astronomical figure in the year 1900. Now, the other man was the great preacher Jonathan Edwards, who believed in God, and he married a woman of the same opinion, of the same character, believed in God. And from this union, 729 descendants were studied. And they discovered that 300 of them were preachers, 65 were college professors, 13 were university presidents, 6 were authors, 6 became U.S. congressmen, congressman, and one was even the president of the United States. Wow! One man left a tragedy, and the other left a legacy. Right? So when it comes to living, us living, for the generations to come, you know, I believe that God is saying to us, think more than, just, think more than just about yourself and how you live. I believe that that God is a God of generations and that we need to be thinking three. That concept is called think three. And here are some think, uh, think three Bible verses. Exodus chapter 13, 15. God addresses Moses and he, and he says to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of who? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. God is a God of generations, at least three generations, right? Proverbs 13, 22 talks about leaving wealth. He's, and it says, don't, leave, don't use your wealth just for yourself, but leave an inheritance to your children's children, to the generations, right? Psalm 112, verse 1 and 2 says, Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land, and the generation of the upright will be blessed. Let me re-emphasize that statement again. This generation needs you. This genera ge generation needs you. And I want to give you five things that we can give the next generation that they need from us. You can write these things. Okay, number one, what the next, this generation needs and a generation coming up after us need is for us to declare certainty in uncertain times. Are we living in certain times? No. <laughs> in, we're living in uncertain times, aren't we? You know, and here's a young man, Joshua. Was the, remember Joshua in the Bible? He was the, he was the guy that God appointed after Moses to take God's people who came out of Egypt, wandered around the desert for 40 years, and they, they went into the promised land. And Joshua led the people of God into the promised land. God went before him, wiped out all the occupying people in that land, the foreign people cleared the land, and the people got into the promised land. And Joshua was very, very concerned. Joshua realized that they, they were living in very uncertain times. And, they were, and the people of God were facing an uncertain future, even though they were in the promised land. They were in the land of plenty. And he was afraid. Are the people of God going to lose their passion for God? Are they going to get up in wealth and riches and all the, the abundant supplies, and they no longer have to war and live by faith? Look, are they going to lose their... Are they going to end up um, worshiping the idols of wealth and riches? Are they going to worship other idols, foreign idols? And so he addressed the people. He said, listen, our God is a holy God and a jealous God. So therefore, you've got to make a choice whom you're going to serve and live for. And then he made this declaration, this certain declaration, Joshua 24, 15. As for me, let's read it. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Kids need 
Uh, this generation needs to hear certainty. And a lot of times, let's be, let's be honest, all they hear from us a lot of times is our uncertainty, don't they? They, they hear the words, we, you know, we, we pick up on what's happening in our culture. And then suddenly we find our words are filled with uncertainty, negativity, and fears. And listen, they pick up on that. And I believe that what we need, what they need, is to know that God is the future for them and that they're part of God's big plan, right? And they need Joshua's, they need leaders in their lives, they need mothers, they strong dads and moms, they need people, they need leaders who will, who will declare with certainty, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Stand by it, declare it, be not be afraid. Amen? We need people of courage. You see, if there's ever a time, if there's ever a time when we needed brave people, brave-hearted people, it's now. If there's ever a time we needed brave-hearted men, it's now, right? If there's ever a time when need, we needed men to send their wives and children to church, and, you know, and not just to send them, but to go with them, it's now, right? Yeah. To be with them. We need strong families, you know? We need more men. And the young ladies said, yeah, we do need more men, right? <laughs> we need more men. We need more young men, and we need more older men, right? We need men. And you know, broadly across North America, North America, statistics say that churches are somewhere between an average of 60, 61 to 70% female. We need more men. We need more men serving in the church. Strong men declaring their faith. And we need more men serving in different areas of the church, like even kids' church. You know, I mean, I mean I'm so thankful for the, the great women that, that we have in our church. But we need men to be serving in those areas where kids can actually see men expressing their faith, like Brent Granger serves in the kids' ministry. And we need men declaring their faith, teaching our kids they need to see that strong male model. Amen? amen. Second thing they are. Amen. See the ladies say amen. amen. Second thing that they need is they need us to help them know who they are and be secure in their identity as children of God. Who they are. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says that we were created image in the image of God, right? Male and female, we were created. In other words, we are God's divine design. Would you agree with that? And they need to know that, th that there's nothing about the way they were made that's a mistake. That they are not a mistake. Amen? Amen. They need to know that their gender is not a mistake. Yeah. Amen? Amen? They need to know that and they need us to protect their identity, right? And, to, and then the concept, their ideas of, about who they are in and through Christ. I want to tell you, we're living in a spiritual warfare, and Satan's plan against our young people and our children is to attack their identity. And I've never seen it so prevalent, so, so real today. You know, at City Light Church, we want our children to know that they were created in the image of God. And male and female, they were created. There's only two options. Amen? And despite their ethnicity or despite their color, red, yellow, black, or white, they are all precious in his sight. Amen? Amen. It's time to speak up. We need children to be strong. Yeah. And we need to teach them to be strong. And, you know, they're getting bombarded. Yeah. They're been getting bombarded with negativity, with prejudice, with criticism and, 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 and being bullied. See, it, but it's in these times that we can take these opportunities, sit down to them, and we can impart their identity, their God identity, into their lives. We can need to teach them to be strong. No matter what the enemy says, no matter what somebody else says, they can say, no, this is who I am in Christ. This is what God made me to be. Amen, I'm a child of God. You know, and, and, and God is my, you know, I serve a mighty God. 
You know, and, and I think that's the warfare. We need to speak. Their God, their God given identity. You know, I say it's hard to believe. It's actually hard to believe that people don't like, sometimes there are people who don't like us because of what we stand up for. You know, Karen and I, over the years, we've experienced criticism. We've been called names. We've been ridiculed. But you know what? We've never lost any sleep. And we've never lost our salvation over it. Instead, we've just moved, of, we just keep moving forward in faith and confidence. Because you know why? Because we know who we are and we know whose we are. Amen? There's a confidence that we have just because we know our true identity. And that's what we need to impart into the generation that's coming up and with us right now. We need to move, move forward. I want to say this again. No matter who you are, you are God's divine design, and God does not make mistakes. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Third thing this generation needs from us is this. They need us to stand strong. I said stand strong and courageously in the face of our current culture. If we're ever going to see the blessing of God, we cannot be timid people. We cannot be timid people. The generations following us need us, and they need us to be spirit-filled. They need to be, us to be spirit-led, you know, and maybe even tongue-talking believers, right? I talked about that last week, how important it is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have this incredible language called speaking, you know, speaking in other tongues. It's a God thing that God wants to give us. They need to see that. They need to see us, literally, people who are on fire for God, willing to give up anything to follow Jesus. Amen? You know, there are so many, I said, there are so many wishy-washy people, Christians, living wishy washy, half-baked lies. Amen? And I want to tell you, sometimes I'm one of them. See, we need to be the people who, after having done everything, are standing firm. Amen? Would you agree with that? Proverbs 10, 25. When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous, what do they do? They stand firm forever. The storm has come, you know, the floods have come, but they're still standing. Disappointments have come, you know, something, negative things have happened, but still, they're still standing, still serving Jesus, still coming to church, still praying bold prayers, still giving generously, right? Still multiplying the favor of goodness and goodness of God in their lives so they can pass it on to the next generation. Listen, if we're ever going to see the blessing of God, I want to say that again, we can't be timid people. We can't be timid people. I want to share an experience with you, and I've shared it before, but I'll share it again, <clears throat> about the first time I went to the Philippines. The first time I went to the Philippines, it was a group of 10 people. And some people from our church, and some people from Calgary. And I remember this one day, uh, we had to go to Manila. We were going to downtown Manila. <clears throat> and so we were able to go so far. We, were, we, we took some vehicles. Then we, we, we took the light, the, the, the uh, transit. And, and uh, we were heading right into Manila. And I remember uh, we were being led by Pastor Frank Amanti. And uh, like there were literally thousands of thousands of people in, the, in Manila, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a huge city and there are so many people. And there were crowds everywhere. And so, you know, the, and the, the platform was always filled with people. So I remember Pastor Frank saying to me, listen, guys, there's 10 of us. we got to stick together. Don't, you know, let, let's make sure when those doors open, uh, when, the, when, those, when, the, when the train doors open, make sure you're a part of it and push. you got to be aggressive. you got to push your way in. Don't be left out. We don't want anybody left out. So we said, yeah, okay, we'll do it. I said, yeah, I'll do that, Pastor Frank. And so we're all waiting. The, the, the platform is getting crowded. Everybody's coming, and the whole crowd is pushing up towards the train. The train doors open. 
and there was a rush. There was people coming up, but there was a rush of people going in. And guess what happened? I was too polite. <laughs> and you know where the door closed? Right in front of my face. And I looked at the. I looked as that train was going away. Nine faces looking through the windows, <laughs> waving at me, get me goodbye. Sometimes we got to be aggressive. Be aggressive in your faith, in your love, in your profession of Christ. The way you make, you live, makes a difference. Amen? Don't be left out. I believe some of the most influential and powerful families are the families who have this big thinking, generational, generationally minded uh, have mindset, and they want to invest in their children, teaching them, and they're preparing them to live upright and godly lives. And listen, you know, it takes courage. It takes conviction. It takes commitment to raise godly, healthy families today. Psalm 112, verse 1 says, Blessed are those who fear the Lord and find great delight in His commands. Their children will be what? Mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be best. The, uh, the upright, the upright, those who serve Jesus, those who are connected to our church, faithful, serving, loving, giving, the upright, the upright, their children will be mighty in the land. Another translation says they will be prosperous and they will be generous. They will flourish in the land. Now, here's a family. This is the Abera family. Do you recognize this couple? Hey, do you guys recognize each other? This is, you know, this is a mighty this is a mighty man and woman of God. And this is a mighty family. Amen? The, you know, I, Joseph and Aiden, are you guys here? Stand up for just a second. Is that family here or are they not here? Can you stand up for just a second? Stand up. Stand up. Come on, come on. You guys, the whole family. Whole family stand up. Whole family. Come on. Whole family. This is a mighty family. This is a fantastic family. Okay, I can embarrass you enough. You can sit down. I, you know, I, we've known Yosef and Laden for I don't know how many years, probably 15 years now. But, you know, I've, I've, I've looked at, I've seen what their family has gone through. They came out of, uh, uh, out of hardship and danger from the land of Eritrea or Ethiopia. But they came out of that place. The stories are just, wow, amazing. You know, and they, what they've done to establish a strong, godly family is amazing. They've gone through hardships. They've gone through difficulties. They've had miracles happen in their family, literally miracles. Uh, I've seen Yosef. You know, we've had men's breakfast in the past. Yosef would be there. He'd not, he, he's bringing all his boys, and they're eating half the food up, right? But they're there, right? <laughs> they're growing boys. But this is a mighty family. You know, when you think about it, how, how many grandkids are these guys going to have, right? And every, so they're going to have many, many grandkids, and they're all going to be mighty in the land. And Joseph and Aiden, they, you know, they take their kids. I know they, they pray with them. They teach them the word of God. They're always imparting you know, their identity and their destiny into their children. Way to go, guys. Way to go. Thank you. Way to go. This is one of the examples of the great families that we have here at City Light Church. Number four, they need to see us standing firmly upon the Word of God. God spoke to Joshua in uncertain times, and this is what he said. Joshua 1, 7 and 9, message version. Strength, courage, you are going to lead this people into the, in, to inherit the land that I promised to give their ancestors. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. I love those words. Give it everything you have, heart and soul. And don't for a minute let this book of the Revelation be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going. Then you'll succeed. Haven't I commanded you? Strength, courage, don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step you take. You know, that, that's like a, and Jesus almost echoed that. He says, and lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. He's with us. He will never leave us. Let me see. He, there's such an emphasis on God's word today. God's word is what gives us faith and the power 
to stand strong in these times. Amen? It's God's word. That's what, it, that's what it does. The whole Bible is constantly, consistently urging us to live in that place of, of pos- in the pl- live in places of possibility. Urging us to believe and have faith in God. Listen, big things happen when you have faith in God, right? Having faith in God can literally, will literally turn your life around. And God's word, God's word is God's revelation. The Bible is God's revelation of how you and I were to live on this planet. And we cannot live successfully apart from the Word of God. The Word of God is a powerful weapon, which I'll talk more about later on. It's, it's a, uh, in another week, it's, it's, it's a weapon of our warfare. And listen, the Word of God needs to be not just in our heads, it needs to be in our hearts, and needs to be coming out of our mouth. You know, the Word of God means nothing if it's just written in the pages of your Bible. It has to be believed in, it has to become a, with faith, and it's got to be spoken with faith, and then it becomes a powerful sword of the Spirit. Powerful, powerful weapon. And that's why at City Light Church, God is saying we need to grid, put a greater push and an emphasis on God's Word. And on this fall, I, I, want, I want to get the Bible into every age of our, gen, of, of our church, in all the ages, into the small groups. Every, every, you know, every time we meet, No, we have a great meeting. Let's center it upon the Word of God. So when I look at, when I see what's been happening in the the world over the last two years, and I see people, I see believers, I mean, I've seen church people, people literally getting caught, swept up in in the mindset of the culture. And sometimes I have to question myself as a preacher. You know, even I met with other preachers, like, we have to question ourselves as preachers, and we have to ask ourselves, Lord, what should we have done? What could we have done to, kept, to keep, keep this from happening? You know, and I'm so thankful for this church because I know that in our church, we have so many people who are strong in the Word, and they know their Bible. But I also know that there are many people who go to church who don't know what the Scriptures say. So when, so when there's a little bit of adversity, when there's a few lies and deceptions that are being promoted in our culture, they can't stand. People just fall, and they don't, they don't recognize how contrary what, what they're hearing is to the Word of God. And so they, can't, they, they get caught up in it, and they can't stand. I heard a, a pastor say recently that there are two things happening right now in our churches. People are, di- people are divided. There is a falling away, and there's, at the same time, there's a stepping up. People are falling away. And not just in North America, even, even in, in other countries, we're seeing that happen. People are falling away. People are, are leaving churches, and they're taking on, he says, the ideologies, the verbiage, the concepts, the device, divisiveness of the world, and they're mad at the church. They're angry. They're speculating. They're judging. There are, that's happening. But at the same time, there are actually people that are saying, I need to get back to church. I need to get back. I remember when mom and dad took me to church and I was in the presence of God. I remember when there was peace in our home. I remember going and worshiping God and there was that sense of peace in the presence of God. You know, I remember going, you know, I've got to get back there. I've got to get back. I've, I've got to get back to God. I've got to get back to the Bible. I've got to get back to church. Amen? You know, and, and I've got to get my kids plugged in. You know, there is a shift happening. There's a shift happening. There, there are, you know, and this is, an, and I see this happening in our church. I've talked to other pastors. There, there is a going out, but at the same time, there's a coming in. And I want to tell you, with, even with all this happening, the church is not getting weaker. The church is getting stronger. Because you know the people who are here right now? You're the people of God who want to go on with God. You're the, you see the value of being a part of a community of faith that you cannot live a life alone. You want to learn. You want to be imparted to. You want to be part of the great plan of God. Would you agree with that? You are awesome people. You should give yourselves a hand. Thank you for being part of God's great church. We are so honored to have you here today. You know, church is not getting weaker. It's getting stronger. 
But strength depends so much on how we base our lives on the Word of God. Listen to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6. Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside you, and then get them inside your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to, the, to when you fall into bed at night. Tie them on your hands, your foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your homes and on your city gates. And he's saying literally all day long, impress the word of God upon your kids, right? Speak truth, because listen, without truth, without truth, they cannot stand. The next generation will not be able to stand. We can't stand without truth. Matthew 6, 24 and 27, Jesus said these words. When he was talking about the parable of the wise and the foolish builders, he said, these words I speak to you, are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words to build your life on. So true, isn't it? You know, and I think one of the greatest weakness, weaknesses of preaching overall today is this, that it's heavy on explana explanation, but too light on application. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you not just to hear the word, you know? That's the purpose of preaching, is not just to hear the word, but to be a doer of the word. Be a doer of the word. So, starting this fall, so, starting this fall, we are having this course called the Growth Track. And the Growth Track is really word-based. And the Growth Track is four consecutive weeks, October 5, 12, 19 to 26. Listen. I want every single person here to take the growth track. Did you hear that? I want every single, and, and I don't want you to take just one or two. I want you to take all four. Just do it. Do it. Amen? Grow. Don't stay in that place. Get your word. Get your life based upon the word of God. Number five, one more. They need to see us be the church and bring them to church. I said the best gift, one of the, the best gifts that you can ever give your children is to bring them in and get them involved into a community of faith and to bring them to church so they can make friends of faith and so they can even call the church a second home. Because listen, the church is plan A and there is no plan B. And God wants every single person to be a part of his church. And yes, I know that some people have gotten hurt in churches, and maybe you're one of them too as well. You know, but listen, you know, uh, people do get hurt. You know, it's hurt people that hurt people. And sometimes we hurt each other. But listen, that's what the church is for. All the graces of God, the ability to forgive one another, love one another, serve one another, all that, all that, all that is there. God is ready to impart with us, within us, the ability to love each other, like the world has never seen. Amen? All, yeah, it's, wherever there's people, it's going to be a mess. But God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, can heal all the messes. Amen? So, you know, and, and I believe, Kevin Gerald, I remember him talking about, about uh, people getting hurt in church. And he, and he said, um, the best, he said, the quickest way, the quickest way to lose your family, the quickest way to lose your church is to blame the church. Don't blame the church. Church is not perfect. Amen? You know why the church is not perfect? Because you're in it, right? Yeah. Jesus loved the church, and he gave his whole life for it, for it right? And that's what he's building. So, question me, why would anybody be against what Jesus loves and what Jesus builds? Amen? Amen. You're a part of his church. You were meant to be a part of God's great church. God created every one of us to make a difference. And, he, and, he, and, he, and I believe the greatest thing that God sometimes needs to do today is reveal who we are in Christ and, and, and what he's done for us and what he's, you know, the ability and the potential we have as believers in Christ. We can make a difference. You know, the Bible tells us that we are not an accident on this earth, that God had planned you and me before the foundation of the earth. In Ephesians 1 verse 4, long 
long ago. He decided to adopt us into his family through Jesus Christ. And what pleasure he took in planning in this. God put you into this church. You are part of not just an institution, an organization. You're part of something very viscous, something very fluid, organic, called the family of God. Very spiritual, very powerful, very the highest privilege of a believer to believe anywhere, to be belong anywhere, is to be a child of God in God's great church. Amen? Amen. And I believe that he intended through the church, through godly parents, to powerfully infuse in you and us and the next generation our identity and our vision for your life. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm done. So, challenge, challenge. Live your life in a way that it impacts the generations beyond you. Amen? Amen? What you're doing today will determine the value of your life. And somebody said your legacy is not built. It's not built at your deathbed, but it's revealed there. So live your life, right? Generously, aggressively, passionately for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Bow your heads. Thank you, Father. <coughs> Thank you, Father. I want to just speak to someone. Maybe there's more than one. Maybe you're wondering about your significance, your value, what your purpose is. I want to tell you today that you are not an accident. You were planned and you were created by Almighty God to be here on this planet at this very moment in time. If you know, want to know your purpose and your destiny, then you need to connect with your Creator, the one who made you in the very first place. And He will reveal to you your incredible love and the incredible sacrifice that he endured on the cross to pay for your sins. And that if you believe in him and you receive him, you can become a child of God with a brand new start, with a brand new life. Jesus said, the devil comes to rob, kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life, and that abundantly. If that's you, you need Jesus, you haven't connected to him, then I want you to just bow your heads, close your eyes, and just agree with me in prayer right now. And this prayer... I promise you, it'll change your life for eternity, for eternity. Repeat after me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of every sin that I've committed. Today and now here, Lord, I invite you into my heart. To come into my heart, live inside of me by your Spirit. Today, Lord, I make you my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' Holy name I pray. Amen.